Pues muy buenos días a todos, comenzando con el pie derecho. Ya estamos a jueves, jueves 24 del mes de febrero. Hoy, señoras y señores, es Día de la Bandera Mexicana. Felicidades a todos los mexicanos por el Día de la Bandera de México. Y la verdad que no se pierdan las conmemoraciones que están haciendo por medio de, de YouTube, por medio del canal de, de nacionales que existen en México, para que pues, por favor, se vean las celebraciones que están haciendo. Unas cosas maravillosas. Felicidades a todos por el Día de la Bandera y en especial a mi hermano Luis Martín Soto Magaña, que es su cumpleaños. Él nació el Día de la Bandera. Te quiero mucho, hermanito. Feliz, feliz cumpleaños y te voy a mandar un, también un voice message, un beso y todo, 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 mi amor, porque ya sabes que te quiero mucho. Pues bueno, gracias por estar con nosotros. Yo soy su servidora y amiga Blanca Araceli, la madre Sota, en este su programa de Las Madreadas. Y usted dice, ¿por dónde? Pues por dónde más por la mejor radio FM, la joya de California. Estamos aquí de lunes a viernes de 9 a 10 de la mañana. Gracias por participar con nosotros, gracias por su preferencia. Y recuerden que esos minutitos, si ven a Diego, si me ven a mí con los ojitos abajo, es que estamos compartiendo y diciéndole a todo el público, vente, se va a poner muy divertido, muy bueno, muy chicharachero este programa de Las Madreadas, porque hoy toca jueves de teatro y... La vena lo sabe, así es que hay que vivir, vivir el teatro, el teatro es vida. Así es que los invitamos a que se sintonicen, inviten a todo mundo. Pero antes de eso voy a presentar a mi compañero de cada mañana que está aquí, incansable, siempre poniendo el buen humor, la sonrisa y la buena actitud y la disponibilidad para que todo el mundo podamos conectarnos y conocer la grandeza de los seres humanos que dejan en este mundo y en esta gran humanidad. Así es que él es caricaturista, que por cierto ha estado subiendo sus caricaturas, Diego me encanta, me encanta que esté subiendo tus caricaturas, también es compositor, escritor, eh, eh, promotor de talento, una persona dedicada desde hace más de 40 años a la música y desde hace 11 años con su bebé, la mejor radio FM, ya vamos para los 12 años, ya prontito, y también pues ahora en, eh, se nos va a lanzar como actor en unas nuevas series de televisión y pues me da muchísimo gusto, miren eso, ahí está su caricatura mar maravillosa, de verdad, que ojalá empiece a retomarlo poco a poquito, pero me da mucho gusto que lo está publicando para que vean que no, ay, la blanca dice, la blanca, no, pues tiene un montón de atributos este hombre y definitivamente compositor increíble y cantante con una voz excepcional. Así es que vamos a recibir con muy fuerte aplauso a mi querido amigo, compañero de todas las mañanas, este gran ser humano, Diego de la Mejor Radio FM. Yeah. Dieguito, buenos días. No te escucho, no te escucho, Dieguito. A ver, súbele el volumen, ¿ok? Ahí va, ahí va, ¿no? Ahí está apagado tu micrófono, ahí está prendido. La mejor radio. Eso. A ver, no te escucho, Dieguito. Ahí viene, ahí viene. Aló, aló. Bueno, lo que arreglas eso, vámonos con el minuto del de video. Yo ahorita regreso contigo, espero que ya esté solucionado el problema, pero les digo a todos los amigos que se están conectando que hoy tenemos eh, jueves de teatro, porque ya se cambiaron de viernes a jueves. Mañana estará Ángeles con nosotros, pero les vamos a compartir el video de la semana para que sepan qué es lo que estuvo, para que no regresen a ver nuestros programas y también qué es lo que va a venir el día de mañana. Así es que con la música del hermoso Daniel Sosa y Gabriel Almeida, y con los gráficos de Eric Calderón, les invitamos a que se pongan a bailar. Ya te escucho, Dieguito. Ah, correcto, gracias, gracias. Y pues nos vamos, eh, preciso decirte, pues lo estabas diciendo tú misma, una de mis tantas caricaturas que he hecho a través de toda mi vida, murales y arte y gráfico que he hecho a través de muchos años. Ahí está, pero bueno, gracias por la presentación, Blanquita. Hoy estamos, ¿a, ¿a cuánto estamos? ¿A 20 qué? ¿A 20? 24, Día 20, de la Bandera. 24, día de la Bandera, hombre, híjole, tantos años aquí que se nos está olvidando un poco lo de la grandeza de México. No la grandeza, sino las festividades, ¿no? Porque México siempre será grande, desde luego que sí. Bueno, vamos a decirle a todos los amigos que están conectados, si usted tiene un amigo que se llame Modesto o Modesta, alguna amiguita que lleva, eh, que lleve este nombre, por favor, llámele, felicítele, porque es el día de su santo. También vamos a felicitar a todos aquellos que están cumpliendo años. Mil, mil felicidades a todos aquellos amigos que están cumpliendo años. Felicidades, desde luego que sí. Y también, bueno, hoy es 24 de febrero, se celebra el Día de la Bandera. Y también 
da inicio el carnaval. Por aquí nos ponen esta nota. Y vamos a decirles también que algunas de las efemérides que tengo, de cuestiones que sucedieron hace muchos años, en el año de 1500, nace Carlos V, futuro emperador del sacro eh, imperio romano germánico. Pero en el año de 1837 nace Rosalía de Castro, figura clave en la literatura del siglo XIX. <coughs> Perdón. Tengo que decirles que tenemos en este momento una temperatura, una temperatura de solamente, vamos a ver, aquí lo tengo, que me lo dé, que me lo dé. Y bueno, son buenos, eh, 36 grados, tuvimos como mínima temperatura en la madrugada, 22 grados solamente. Vamos a tener un día totalmente soleado con 50 como máxima temperatura. Los vientos se están moviendo a 4 millas por hora y tenemos una humedad relativa de 36%. Hay una visibilidad en las carreteras de 9 punto millas, así es que, bueno, vamos a eh, presentar a esta gran mujer. Bueno, antes les digo que el mundo está tenso porque ya inició la guerra en Ucrania contra Rusia y está bien cañón, está bien difícil la situación, hay que rezarle al Todopoderoso que no vaya más allá de lo que sucedió esta mañana, los bombardeos. Eh, continuos, intensos, y vamos a ver qué pasa, ¿no? Hay que estar al pendiente de las noticias. Y desde luego, para presentar a mi amiga, que se ha dedicado toda su vida a las artes, al teatro, a la actuación, al canto, al baile, a promover la cultura de nuestro México y de otros países, pues me va a quedar corto el tiempo, por eso la presento de la siguiente manera. El que no conoce a Blanca Soto, no conoce Los Ángeles, y un aplauso para ella, por favor, bienvenida Blanquita. Muchísimas gracias, Diego. Nos vamos inmediatamente con el video, porque una de nuestras invitadas se tiene que ir pronto. So vamos a pasar el videíto y luego nos vamos a presentarlas a ellas directamente para que las conozcan. Aquí viene, esto es para nosotros y para ustedes, el video de la semana. Vámonos y vamos a empezar con buen humor y alegría. Here we go. Ya llegó el yo, que tanto esperaba. Este es el yo de las madreadas que están de tarde, mañana y noche, para que escuches en casa o noche, trayendo información bien importante para que aprendas y te deshaces Facebook, YouTube y otras versiones de plataformas. Ya conoces, ya están las madreadas, ya están las madreadas, ya están las madreadas, ya están las madreadas. Ahí está, señoras y señores, y ahora sí nos vamos luego, luego, and this is going to be a bilingual show, so please feel comfortable to, to watch in English, Spanish, you can put translator here, and Facebook, and also it's going to be in YouTube, so don't worry about it. So we're going to introduce right away because we feel very honored to have them here, and this beautiful uh, Jueves Thursday of theater, uh, this amazing, amazing writer, and also she is uh, the director of this play, it's called Reflections of and is participating in the 10 Minutes Theater Festival and Frida Kahlo Theater. And let me tell you that she um, she is one of the, well, he's one of the persons, so I'm not sure. I, I, I gotta check with her. But her name is Cinema. Let's welcome her. Yay, Cinema. Bienvenida, bienvenida, bienvenido. Hi. Are you going for, Thank you, you going for she, he, or como, como, como va? She, she is good. Yes. Porque estás muy hermosa, pues. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Aunque la vida DJ cantando. Thank you. Bueno. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, you for, for agreeing to be with us and this is amazing that you know people like you are still you know uh, like said uh, swimming against the river because i know theater is really hard here to do in los angeles and definitely there's a lot of um i mean we are in the mecca of the industry of the films movies tv shows and few people wants to do theater honestly not a lot of people want to do that. Yeah. So, so you guys are still writing and you know, doing your own production is amazing. And on, honestly, I take off my hat to say thank you for all the, the hard work that you guys are doing. But I know uh, you are <laughs> yes with us and, and you need to tell us about the play and please introduce her. I know she's been waiting here and I know she's going to leave soon. So uh, please go ahead. 
Okay. Um, well, my star, because I do consider her a star, um, I've known for quite a while, and um, just the the work she has done um, in uh, with with reflections of and other other productions. We've um, I've directed a play that she wrote called Hashtag Last Dance, which was um, I think 2016, 17, something like that. She'll she'll tell you more, but um, uh, I was the I was the honored director. And um, so, and as, and not only that, she's a friend. I, I've known her for quite a while, and I knew that she would bring all that I needed for this uh, piece, reflections of. And um, you know, I, I pretty much she was one of the inspirations for this play as well. So uh, let me introduce her, Sydney Rogers, aka Miss Barbecue, known as. Are you there? Where are you, girl? Hi there. there. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much Hi. for having me on having me on here. And thank you for the introduction. Cinnamon is a dear, dear <laughs> friend of mine. Um, we've known each other over 15 years. And I've been doing theater for over 30 years. And um, very, yeah, over 30. Yeah, I'm 50, honey. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Look, you, can, you can tell me you're no. 30 and I believe it. Oh, bless your heart. But but very few times am I able to find a piece that speaks to me and that that is more about me. Lots of times in theater, there's not a lot of parts for Black trans femmes, you know, and drag queens and stuff like that, too. So a lot of times we have to make our own content and we have to write our own content. That's the only way we're going to get our stories told. So, so since, when Cinnamon uh, showed this to me, when we did it for... Um, uh, uh, Casa Zero Uno Zero Uno mm -hmm. um, for the first time for um, East Side Queer Story, East Side Queer Stories. Um, it was um, one of the few plays that was even in the in the in the in all the pieces that have that had like a black character and had a drag queen and stuff like that too. So it was amazing. So much fun to like film it. Yeah. Great. It well, you said you you already mentioned that you've been working for over thirty years and yeah. And and how is it for to be in LA working in theater and mm -hmm. and knowing that you know even though theater is not that you know popular here in Los Angeles because a lot of people you know don't opt to to support theater it's very few well, and and few well, the, well, well out here in LA theater is always the gateway to getting cast in other stuff so so a lot of times a lot of the actors will have to take off work or we we call it pay to play. Um, out here where you have to literally take time off off work and stuff to like do a do a show and stuff like that and um, you actually take a pay cut but for the love of theater mm -hmm. for the love of theater we we take that we make that sacrifice and theaters go undergoing a huge turnaround right now because of George Floyd and the protests and stuff that a, a lot of theaters are being called out for not having diverse work and, ha and not having people of color um, in the artistic director positions and stuff. So there's a huge overturn that's happening in the LA theater scene about being um, being equitable. That is great. And it's amazing that, you know, that, that things are in part of that is all the work that you guys have been doing. Yeah. 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 And, and, and we have to just keep, keep going at it and we have to push, we have to push for more, more opinions and points of view because it's not all just white men and their stories that are valid. All of our stories are valid. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And without throwing spoilers at Sydney, tell us a little bit of why because you said, you know, what, once you have all this experience, definitely it's a pick and choose for us also actors to see, you know, I love you, but maybe this character is not related and, you know, I'm going to pass on this one. But to what grabbed you, uh, you know, on this story in particular? Reflections. Oh, reflections. I have to do that. Me, me and Cinnamon are huge fans of this move, this play called Torch Song Trilogy. Yes. We're huge fans of it. And Torch Song Trilogy starts off with a drag queen saying a monologue, talking to the camera. But it was a white man, you know, white man drag queen. You know, it, of course, their stories are up first. I love Harvey, Harvey Firestein. Shout mm -hmm. out to you, but. But but we we've seen it, and so when when it, when this 
when this monologue came along, it wasn't just the glitz and glamour of drag, but it was also the hurt and the trauma that we carry with us. And that's always the, the part I think a lot of people don't don't look at when it comes to pe performers and stuff like that. And that, that that's what makes us such good performers is that we bring the trauma and the drama that, that we've gone through in our own personal lives onto the stage. So, so a lot of the stuff Simon wrote, I was like, oh my gosh, I've lived that. I've done that. I've been there. And I can tap into that. And even when we were shooting, when I was coming across parts that wasn't hitting, Cinnamon was like, think back into this moment. Think back to that moment. And then she would pull it out of me, which is a, a, what, what a director should do, is pull out the emotion. No, it's, it's, and I think it's, it's so much needed to see that other side, not just the happy everything is wonderful yeah no you gotta have that balance right you you got you gotta have you gotta have that balance that that for to me that's what makes great theater what, what make, make, makes a movie great what makes us watch tv shows over and over and and movies over and over because it takes us to that takes us in that journey and, and it also gives us hope um, reflections is also about like at the end of it all i've come through and i am a light you know, I've come through it all. And and that that's where I think uh, a, lo a lot of our stories, especially for people of color, that we're always tragic, something we die. You know, it's always like this sad story and stuff like that. But at the end of ours, it's always all about hope. Exactly. Hermoso, and I'm, I'm so like, you know, see me, I gotta invite you more often because people <laughs> like you need to open our eyes and open a lot of people's hearts to understand, you know, we're, where all this comes from. And also, sí, abierto. You know, yeah. <laughs> Yo sé que ahorita la obra, the play is right now uh, running for the 10 minute theater festival. Are they plans to put it in other TV uh, or put it on YouTube? Or, or, I mean, because pe more people need to see this. And unfortunately, a lot of times, you know, people miss the, the theater festival and they, it's gone. So, but it's, it's something coming up after this uh, with this beautiful play. Uh, what, what is the next project? Are you going to do another one? So tell us a little bit about that. Um, what about you, Cinnamon? I, I, I'm already cast in a read through with Occidental College right now. So we're gonna be um, showing that next Sunday, actually this Sunday, we're gonna be doing that. It's for another play that I got cast in. Is um, that I, uh, online? Yeah, it's gonna be online too. Oh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll put it on my Instagram and stuff. My Instagram wait, is wait. at, at Miss Barbecue LA. Oh, great. I stand. Yeah. So, Miss Barbecue Alley. So please make yeah. sure you follow this amazing, amazing uh, actress and all that you're doing. And the transformation of theater is part, and they're a part of the history of this at the theater now. I think you guys are. Yes, doing absolutely. Here, I'll put my, I'll put my, my, uh, my Instagram. There it is. It's in oh, my, okay. It's in my name now. That that's my Instagram and stuff. Awesome. I do have to go because I have to go to this other. I'm I'm uh, moderating a panel with India Moore right now. Oh. So um so I'm gonna be moderating that with Paramount. So I have to get going. But nice. thank you so much for having me. I love you. I love thank you, Cinnamon. You. Thank you so much, Simi. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Okay. Y ya estamos aquí con thank dos you. verdaderos directores, escritores y bueno dijeran por ahí dentro del Teatro de Los Ángeles produciendo de todo porque pues la verdad hay que movernos. And I'm so glad that you were able to join us, Carlos, Carlos Estrada, director and writer of the play okay. Secrets. Secrets. I love it. I love the theme. Pero before, um, I don't know if, if you, are you here with me? And I don't know if you frozen, Carlos, ¿estás bien? No, no, nomás estoy muy, muy calmado. <laughs> <laughs> muy bien. Pues muy buenos días. And I want you, you know, they pueden hacerlo en inglés, en español, como se sientan cómodos. You can say in English and Spanish. But we're going to go very quick uh, with Cinnamon to tell us, uh, Cinnamon, um, how was it, uh, the, or who was the person who in, influenced you or put the sea in your heart to be able to, to say, I'm going to do this for life. And this is going to be my, my call to be a writer and to be uh, in theater. So, ¿cómo fue tu infancia, Cinnamon, que tú te dijiste, bueno, creo que esto va a ser para mí? O, I don't know, maybe when you were a child, you wanted to be some, something else, pero la vida te llevó a ser now to do theater. So, tell us a little bit about you. And then we go with Carlos, definitivamente. 
Okay, um, ever since I was little, I wrote plays and directed all the children in the neighborhood. They had to be in my show. Um, so, I mean, it was just very young. I, I already knew that's what I wanted to do. Um, as far as also uh, being a musician, um, I wanted to be actor, you know, something, something in the entertainment, it had to come through me. And I mean, just writing the, the little plays, I knew like, this is it, like this is, and every time I do write a play, I remember those feelings as a child, like just knowing like, this is what I wanted to do as, you know, a, a grown up. So dates way back. <laughs> so and you you remember after I mean maybe when you were in high school and you decided you remember who was the person maybe a director or writer that inspired you also to become um, mm -hmm. professional in this in this uh, career. Um, I love 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 Pedro Movadar. I love him mm -hmm. as an a, a director. Um, I love even John Waters, David Lynch. Um, those are my influences right there. Um, and I think you can see in my writing and directing that those come through. Um, and a lot of times I write as a man and um, it's just, that's just the way I feel more, uh, things more flow more. Um, sometimes I will, um, sometimes I will challenge myself and, and write as a woman. Um, and do a little more dialogue and things like that. Um, those are, I like to challenge myself with those little, um, those little goals to me. Um, but yeah, those were the, the directors that, that really influenced me and they still do today. I still follow them. Um, and there's, I also like Sofia Coppola. Ooh. She's wonderful. Yeah, I like her. Um, all the little quirky people that that's what i follow <laughs> i love almodovar you know that recently um uh, i don't know if you ever heard the movie kika la película kika have you heard about it's from pedro almodovar no yes okay that yes. That, that actress her name is love... veronica Forque, and i just heard that she passed away two weeks ago three weeks yes ago. I, I didn't know that. And I was uh -huh. like, oh my God. And I love her acting. I love her work in that movie. And a lot of movies. She was one of the chicas Almodovar. She was an, an Almodovar girl. So now we're going to yes. go with Carlos. And Rosie de Palma. It's Rosie true. de Palma is in there too. Ah, yeah. Rosie de Palma. Yeah. In fact, in this one, the new one, no? The, the Pearl of Mom. I love Rosie de Palma. Yeah. Eh, Rosie de yeah. Palma. I uh -huh. Yes. I love every, every, yeah, every character she does. I love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Now we're going to go with Carlos, but we're going to get back, come back to you soon. Carlos, buenos dias. I'm so glad that you made okay. it. To our oh, buenos dias. Program. <laughs> sí, se me pasó completamente. Uh, yo, sé, yo sé, el amor y la felicidad que te digo. No, when, people sí. say, when people say, I don't even know what day I live. No sé qué día vivo. Pero está muy feliz. No, I mean, the last three weeks have just been crazy with work and everything, and I it almost completely slipped my mind. Uh, but I remembered, and luckily I made it. Um, but yeah, um, growing up, I, I don't think, I don't think the idea of writing as a profession was ever something that that was felt apparent or possible. So, really, I mean, everybody, I, I've always been told that I was a good writer, but I just never thought. You, you could do anything with this, you know? Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why the Frida Kahlo Festival is so good is because it really, it doesn't ask a lot from you up front. You just have to write a good 10 minutes. And, but then it asks for a lot of you in the, on the back end because you have to figure out how to, how to do it, you know? Um, and this year, I think, it was especially challenging because we, we thought we were gonna go on stage up until the very last minute. And then we had to figure out what we were gonna do um, as far as filming it and, and putting it all together. So, I mean, I'm just happy that my cast and my my wife and my the rest of the crew were, were able to, you know, help me put it together as well as they could. Um, I mean, for me, 
I think as far as this inspiration is concerned, I, I draw most of my inspiration from from books and, and, and literature, really. I was never a big like director person or actor person. I, I, I don't I, I could tell you, yeah, David Lynch, sure, definitely. Um, I think the first movie I ever saw where I thought to myself, oh yeah, we could do that was um, um, Luis Buñuel, Un Chien Andalou. Uh, I like I saw that and I was like, wow, like that's crazy. Like how like like how did he do that? How did they do that back then? And and it's kind of it, it those I guess are some interesting inspirations. And honestly, the the other thing too is my like how can I put it? I mean, I'm a I'm a I, I feel like a lot of the stories that are that are really interesting and popular right now come from a very personal place. Yeah. And I don't really feel like one putting that much of me out there and two I don't really feel that too many of my stories are, are all that interesting in the current zeitgeist right mm -hmm. and so for me it's really about being absurd being weird being entertaining being a little bit escapist um and kind of wrapping up you know a kernel of truth or a philosophical point or a political point but wrapping it up so much in like chocolate and 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 candy that by the time somebody bites that that little piece it's too late you know they they have to swallow it and 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 i feel like like that's that's what i like to see like that's what i like to hear and so those are the types of stories i, I tell you know um one of my one of my mentors a while back um in business actually said that that the key to to a successful product is that it mm -hmm. at least at the beginning is that it scratches your own itch yeah, in other yeah. words it solves a problem that you're intimately aware with aware of right and and for me yeah all my stories they they entertain me you know like i'm laughing while i'm writing this stuff you know so that's already a good start and from there it's just whatever happens that's great. And when you see finally a piece of you, you know, all done and, and finished, is, is exactly how you feel it was going to be, or is it a little bit different? ¿Cómo, cómo se siente ya ver el resultado? ¿Lo ves diferente? ¿O, o es lo que tú esperabas? ¿O lo ves mejor? ¿Cómo ha sido esa experiencia bueno, para ti? Bueno, yo, yo pienso, especialmente con lo que he hecho con, con Frida Kahlo, porque, porque, Te, te dan la oportunidad de, de seleccionar un director o, o hacerlo uno mismo y, y yo siempre lo hago porque para mí cuando estoy escribiendo yo tengo en mente el escenario cómo se va a ver qué, qué van a hacer los actores dentro de, de, del espacio yo, yo ya, ya tengo todo formulado así es que Sí, si se la doy a un director y, y le digo, oh, hazlo, y, y yo, yo me vale, yo, yo me voy a ir a, a jugar a, a, a juegos de, de video o lo que sea. Sería, sería bueno porque no me preocupo, no me estreso tanto, pero por, por el otro lado, no sé si lo que saldría al fin sería lo que yo quería hacer y, y eso es muy importante porque aunque aunque no es tan per, personal o, y, o no tiene cosas no es una 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 cosa de ideas grandes o bueno yo no pienso pero es algo que es parte de mí y no me siento bien nomás dárselo a otra persona así es que En esta, esta obra, uh, Secrets, yo creo que, que salió más o menos exactamente como, como lo figuré. Okay. Había, habían unas cosas que, que quizás si teníamos más tiempo o más dinero hubiera hecho diferente, um, diferente escenario. Um, hay algunas cosas en, que salen que son... Um, anachronistic right like they don't belong in the time mm -hmm. pero no, no tuvimos mucho tiempo para para 
para hacer muchos cambios en la casa porque estaba aquí en, en el otro cuarto. Um, <risa> así es que, no, pero, pero sí, yo creo que salió más o menos exactamente como lo, lo tenía en mente. Great. So, without throwing spoilers, este Cinnamon, y también te voy a preguntar lo mismo a ti, este, um, Carlos, cuéntanos, uh, when, when you decided, Cinnamon, there was time to write about this play, and I love this photo of Sydney. Oh, I love that photo, too. <laughs> De verdad que sí, me encanta. Yeah, it just it just captures her. Yeah. Um, I just I, I felt the need, as Sydney said, we always see the performance and not the performer. We never know what draw, drove them there and what inspired them, what fueled them to bring that performance out. Um, the, a powerful performance. Usually, there's something even during the day. You, we can have, be having a bad day, and You know, once we get on stage, it's different. We got to be this this person, you know, this this um, entertainer, and nobody knows what's behind it. And so, what that's what influenced me was that there's so much to a person, and pe people go through so much in our lives, and um, a lot of these were real events that happened. Um, and I, I did have to rewrite it for the times now. I, I rewrote a couple things and put in new things for the time, such as pandemics and, um, you know, about church and, and things like that. I, I put, I changed a little bit. Um, so I love monologues. I just, sometimes they're a little, little flat. So mine was, I want I want people to see. I want to build it up. I want I want to build up what we're going to finally see at the end, and um, just when just when you think you know this person, another tier of this person comes along, another level, and so it just kind of draws you in. Um, I know a lot of performers, a lot of drag queens, um, and they've had hard lives. They've had really hard lives. Um, but they still stand up there and they still shine like they haven't, you know, like, you know, they're, they're there for you to see, you know, this living product. And, um, so that's kind of what inspired me, the, the underdog, um, you know, just, just what we don't see in everyday life and what somebody may have to go through to, to live their art and their passion. Yo no sé para ustedes, maybe for, for, you know, for us as an audience, when you see a good piece of, of theater or a good, good short, you always wanted to, to have the next part, the second part or the third part, because 10 minutes, I mean, for uh -huh. writers probably también is also a struggle to, to go and say, well, in 10 minutes, I have to do this. But I don't know if you set your mind to 10 minutes or, or your, your pen or your pluma continues writing and you go, oh, I have to cut because... I went over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. definitely. Definitely could have. Yeah, I could have written a whole a whole screenplay on that. Yeah. Just just that one scene, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I did actually um, include the performance. I, I I didn't have that at the beginning. I just had that you saw the performer ready to go and the, the curtain open but you didn't see the performance. So I had requests. Why don't you show the performance? Definitely. I mean, we I, I, also, I was like, so I wanted to see more because I'm, I'm sure, you know, people wanted to, to have more of this. And you can even have a series of reflections off because it's so much and it's so broad, you know, the, the life of a, a person that has this type Sorry, of life, you know? It's amazing. Me sentí muy, muy intrigada por ver el performance, too. Yes, I was. So, but Carlos, para ti, este, en esta, en esta, eh, ¿qué te llevó a escribir secretos? Secrets. What, what drove you, drove you to, to write about secrets? So, it, it started with two things. The first thing was a, a spam email I got. 
So I got one of those spam like phishing emails, right? That says, that says, you know, it's very vague and it just says, oh, we know what you've been up to kind of thing, right? <laughs> and I thought it was really funny because like we get those, I mean, we phishing emails happen all the time, right? You get them all the time. I mean, and there's even like, you know, a famous, like, I don't know if you guys ever seen the, the movie with Steve Martin, uh, The Spanish Prisoner. No, no I it, haven't. It's, it's a really, really interesting suspense movie. And, and it's named after a, a con, basically, like a, a, a scheme that people run on people called the Spanish prisoner. And it goes way back to like the, like the, I, I don't know, I think it's like the 1700s or 1800s or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the original, like, it's the original, like phishing email, right? Like, basically, somebody writes you saying, Oh, hey, you know, you're, your cousin is is held prisoner in Spain, you know, and we need like X amount of money to ransom him, right? And then it all ends up being like, you know, a scam in the end, right? But that was the was kind of the thing that got me thinking about using that kind of thing as like a pivot point. And then, um, you know, they, they say great artists borrow, uh, good artists borrow and great artists steal. Um, and I'd read a story a while back by Ana Maria Matute um, that has a, a very similar kind of thing going on. And so I remember that story and I thought to myself, huh, what if I just kind of use that as a jumping off point and, and just see where it goes, right? Mm -hmm. And and yeah, that's essentially what, what happened. Um, and it kind of also forced me to, to do the time and place because see, the funny thing about it is you always see like all of these scam emails and phishing emails and stuff like that. And you think to yourself, like, how do people fall for this? Mm -hmm. Like, how, how do people fall for these scams? It, it seems impossible sometimes to you, right? But then you realize like the, the, a good scam has at its heart that it plays upon either the greed of the person who's reading it or the insecurities of fears and insecurities of the person who's reading it or any any number of of like emotional uh, situations right and it, it uses that as the hook and pulls them in and so that's something that i wanted to 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 talk about and you know like i said i always throw in little little bits and pieces here it, it's also i mean the story is also about class struggle right mm. <laughs> because you have a rich a rich person you have a working class person, a person who works, and then you have a person who is poor and destitute. Mm -hmm. And all of, they each see each other as a threat and they each are, are really just taking advantage of each other. You know what I mean? In different ways, whether it's the worker stealing from the woman or whether it's the poor guy just trying to get a meal, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, like giving up on, on, on begging and deciding to, to do something different to try and get his next meal. Or whether it's the, the woman, you know, who's, you know, got basically everything she, she wants, right? And it's just trying to protect it, right? Like that's the, that's the root of conservatism, right? As you get, as people get older, they always say, oh, well, you know, you're, you're, you know, a leftist now, or you're this now or whatever. But when you get older, you're going to become conservative. And that is kind of an inevitability because the older you get, the more incomprehensible the world around you becomes. And the more things you get, the more you want to protect what you have, because, you know, that's just the way it is. And so it's a constant struggle, right, through through the study of like theory and through praxis, right, through actually doing things in the world mm -hmm. that that refine, you know, your ideology, right? That's the only way that you can keep yourself from just, you know, becoming completely reactionary. And so that's the that's the hidden that's the hidden little political social message in the story. But beyond that, it's just really entertaining and funny. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like that's really what I'm trying to do first and foremost. And then everything else is just, just yeah. like, you know, yeah. Like, like when you go to the pharmacy and they say, oh, you know, you can get, you can get it in, in grape flavor. And I always think to myself, like, I know that's for kids, mm -hmm. but can I have some grape flavor? <laughs> like, <laughs> And also, uh, what what uh, I know this uh, are you still part of the, the ten minute theater festival, right? Uh, the Frida Kahlo. 
where people can go and purchase because I noticed yes. there was a certain day, but I think that he, he probably just leave it there so people can go and watch the festival part one and part two, they're available. He and said, you, yeah. Go, yeah, he said right? that was the plan was that you could watch part one and part two. Um, eventually, I think, you and know, they, the I little, think they have also part three, right? This year, I don't think they have part no? three. Oh, I think okay. there's only one and two, but um, I'm part of a, of a little writing group uh, called Collective Voss with with a few other folks who we met, uh, who I met while um, taking a class at Casa 0101. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, eventually, I think we're going to put some of this stuff up up online. Uh, it's just a matter of time um, and getting everybody on board. Because, you know, last year we had four plays in the theater festival. Mm -hmm. <laughs> four of us had plays up. Um, I know, you know, one of one of um, our partners on the on the group, um, uh, Josie Nericcio, recently had a a reading um, for a group for a full length actually mm -hmm. um, with a, a theater company in in Texas, um, and it was really good. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's so funny because you see you know you hear bits and pieces of of a story like every week, right? Like every week, ten pages, eight pages, eleven pages, fifteen pages, but to see all you know, 50 page, 60 pages, right? Yeah. Up at the same time is just amazing. And uh, I definitely want to do that next. So I, I've got, I've, I've got an idea in my head that is going to break one of the promises I made myself, which is that I would never write a, a Cholo story. Um, but it's not really a regular Cholo story. Um, so I think I'm going to make an excuse and, and get around it that way. Because I just think it's it sucks, man. It sucks that the only stories that that people want to hear from, from you know, a, a cis Hispanic male mm -hmm. are stories about gangsters. Like literally, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I write if I write anything quirky, anything interesting, a story that could be populated by white folks, except that they all have Hispanic names, right? Yeah. Nobody's nobody wants nobody's gonna want to see that. You know what I mean? Just, because they're know, like, honestly, oh. I, 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 when I started watching a TV show, a ser series, you know, I was starting to watch one on, on Netflix and the only Mexican, which is not Mexican, but mentioned in as Mexican, that was there was Isaias Morales and he was a drug dealer and he was a bad guy. And no digo Ozar porque, bueno, I don't know. Yeah. But I was like disappointed. Like we don't exist in their world unless we're bad. And some of them. That's yeah true. yeah and that drives that drives me crazy so i mean i try to write funny stories about dudes who are computer programmers or about mm -hmm. you know other like other stuff you know what i mean yeah. it's like like it's just like literally representation is just as easy as saying hey this dude doesn't have to be anything so why don't i make him this you know mm -hmm. what i mean and there's there's absolutely zero of that going on in in Hollywood or or you know even in in major theater right yeah. there's like no thought to like saying oh that person doesn't need, literally need to be anything so why don't I make them something else why don't I make them uh African American why don't I make them Hispanic American Mexican American Puerto Rican American why don't we yeah. make them uh, why don't we make them Asian American? There's there's absolutely no reason to do this. Why don't we make that that character female? Like you know, there's nothing you know, or there's absolutely no reason why you know. But mm -hmm. it, it's a paradigm that everybody's stuck in. But it's so wonderful that we have writers and people can actually go and see plays like yours or like Cinnamon's play that you know it feels reivindicated. You know, that al final alguien está haciendo algo diferente, algo que es fresco. Y que está gustando mucho a la gente because this theater festival has been for a long, I mean, ya tiene unos años el, el Festival de Teatro Frida Kahlo and people yeah. seem to fall more in love with it. You know, for the opportunities, it, it shows the different writers with their own fresh perspective, which sometimes the networks are so, I mean, honestly, I don't even have a TV because, <laughs> I mean, please, and they remake and remake and I, you know, now they bring in the 70s shows, but you guys are bringing so much great things, you know, and, and unfortunately, I mean, come on, turn a little bit and check this uh, amazing writers, porque yo creo que necesitamos eso fresco también en la televisión. You know, any of this, um, 
uh, 10 minutes short place could be a TV series or could be, you know, because it's fresh and it's new and it's people need to hear about this too. Pero me da muchísimo gusto que ustedes me han soltado la pluma. And I wanted to ask you, Cinnamon, uh, for, for you, what is next? Because I know you're about to start in another festival because you uh -huh. not stop, mujer. Yeah. So me da mucho gusto. So, dinos qué viene para ti ahora y cómo la gente te puede seguir en, en, en la social media, please. What's um, coming well, to with Cinnamon and everything she do in? <laughs> okay, well, um, I don't know. Last year was crazy. I know it was like pandemic, mm -hmm. but I was so busy with theater. I did the 10 minute festival. Mm -hmm. I did Chicana Cholas y Chisme. And then I also did Arena, the play, the house musical Arena. I was assistant director in that. And uh, that's Eva Aba Alvarado's piece um that uh, casa 0101 uh which they're bringing it back in june by the way and um that was a sold out run like complete sold out run and it was an amazing experience to to take that on um so what's next for me is chicanas cholas y chisme i have been with them for about five years now and um we are starting up in two weeks and so i'm directing a piece and i'm i've also written a piece which is called young hearts and it's um a little snippet of my uh teenage years growing up as a gay teen um and just and not to give too much away but just how um you know the struggles that we've had um as a, as a gay team back in the 80s um which it was not heard of back then. Um, and just, you know, it gives you a little hope. Um, uh, not Like I said, not to give too much away. It is um, a little bit of, it gives you a hope at the end. Uh, we talk a little bit about Project 10, which was is uh, back in the day that was our, our savior. Um, we helped create this, my, my high school, San Gabriel High School, we helped create this um, place, safe place for gay teens in the 80s. So it is now nationwide. Um, it, it went on to Fairfax High and a woman there um, brought, it, brought it life and it's now all over the country. And um, that's for gay teens. And we, we just don't have, we didn't have that back then. And so, lucky for us that there there was there was a little group of us that you know called on each other and we held each other so again that's coming up it's thriving um that's the the theme this year and the amazing part this is an in person yeah yes it is in person we finally get back into live theater which i love i love being live it was a challenge for Frida, you know, for the online thing for me, you know, film, filming everything. Um, although I love, I love film as well. And, you know, somewhat of a filmmaker, um, but it was a challenge for me because I work on emotion and mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, I, I thought that it wouldn't, it wouldn't translate to the audience. So, I mean, it, you know, I've heard, I've heard it did, you know, I, I've seen and it, it does work. So that's that's what I'm doing. Um, you know, the I festival love work cinema, and I think uh, you know people, you. so they know this is like two blocks from Maria Chi Plaza, uh, so it's very uh, you know it has a uh, the theater is so beautiful, and you can yeah. get your tickets in casa 0101org and also yeah. they have amazing theater classes, and a lot of them are free for teenagers, are free for children. It's an amazing theater, you know. Uh, building done by Josefina Lopez that you know yes. that also has Eddie Padilla as a, a director. I mean, you 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 know there are amazing people who are very dedicated and devoted to the community. And this this amazing theater festival has brought a lot of women, you know, to give them that power of the pen and to to be able to understand what production means, you know, yes. to to design your lights, to design your set. They learn everything. So estas mujeres son right. ingonas ingonas. Right. Yes, it's all women directed, produced, and and written. So it's just amazing. Um, this group of women are just 
Oh, they're just so chingonas. I love them. Exacto. Y también yeah. la, de, la, 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 la de Arenas, I mean, the musical that is coming to Casa 0101. I watched it three times. Oh, nice. I love it. It was such yes. so great. You know, it was great. Musicals, when we see all this beautiful people de nuestra, de nuestra piel y de nuestra gente, necesitamos más yes. musicales así. Ese estuvo fabuloso, fabuloso. Y los chicos, I mean, they should be on Broadway. That, you know, yeah. It was amazing the work they did. Uh, amazing. So, yeah, yes, we're hoping to do that. We're 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 trying to take it there. So, <laughs> great. Give us so, our, whoever how, whoever well, knows anybody. <laughs> Dios, Dios, anybody. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. I so, and how people can follow you, Cinnamon. How are you? Um, Instagram and Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. My Instagram is R I V Cinnamon. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook. I'm under Sin Rivera. Mm -hmm. um cin rivera mm -hmm. and um yeah uh, just follow all my craziness you know i i the, i'm always going and doing something for my community um whether it be a spoken word event that i host um for you know a, a safe space you know for everyone to get up and, and express themselves or writing directing mm -hmm. producing i've also done um uh event women events here in long beach as you know dancing and and mingling and things like that and so when i set my sight to doing something i i usually do it i i do i go for it and i you know i, I check it off my list like you know i want to i want to have a club you know a women's club to gather together where can i do it boom did it so you know i try to that's i try to achieve everything that I, I really want to I want to do so and, and it's usually for my community not you know not only for me I always think there's somebody out there that needs something so yeah thank so you so much Instagram for people uh -huh. to follow you because I know you're amazing I know you'll be creating history in the past I don't know how many years in Los Angeles with your writing <laughs> yeah. with your activism with your you know, bringing conscience and support to the community in all different ways. De verdad, te admiramos y te queremos mucho en esta comunidad. Y sé que vas a ir por muchísimo más, Cinnamon. We, I know, I know for sure you, we're going to hear you. And, and when you go to Broadway with the, with the play, um, <laughs> take me, I could be a good choreographer. <laughs> <laughs> we will keep that in mind. <laughs> Very good. So Thank Carlos, you so much. Yes, we, don't go because we're going to speak goodbye together. So okay. Carlos, Tell us, este, ¿qué viene para ti? Cuéntanos un poquito y también cómo te seguimos a ti en tus redes sociales y en Instagram, ¿cómo estás? Yeah, that's so funny. I keep telling myself, I need to, I need to create uh, uh, some social media accounts for, for my work, you know what I mean? Instead of just my personal stuff and all that. And what's worse is even on the personal side, like I ditched Facebook, you know? Um, and yeah, and I haven't really replaced it. Um, so next for me i'm just writing 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 uh, i mean my my big dream right now i mean my big dream has always been to like try and get like at least a reading of a full length right going somewhere at some theater group somewhere and um some of my friends from my writing group have managed to get that done um i'm trying to get that done and i think i think really like i, I one of the differences for me is is sometimes you have to write for a particular audience you have to have a story that that matches the the particular you know thing that that a group is going for so that's what i'm working on next is i'm i'm trying i'm going to i have i have an idea in my head for a story and i'm just going to write you know 70 80 pages of it and and see what happens um won't be the first time i've written 70 or 80 pages but it'll be the first time that that I actually had some kind of plan, right? And we need we need to to have more writers, you know, con tu con tu frescura, porque de verdad me gusta mucho cómo escribes. Desde el año pasado que tuve la oportunidad de ver tu trabajo, yo dije, wow, this is a guy who tells the story from a different point of view. Porque tú vienes de otro, no porque vengas de otra rareza, pero tienes esta dualidad tanto de idioma como de de ver la vida. So me da muchísimo gusto que estás todavía en la pluma y sigues escribiendo. Have you ever thought to, you know, maybe to submit to to networks? Hopefully they'll start looking at your work. No. 
that ha that hasn't actually crossed my mind at all. Um, you know, it's funny because because you know what I, I participated because HBO has a program. You can just you know check their their website and also HBO. See uh, what is the other one? Um, Universal, Paramount. All of them have a program where they have um, they have to. You know that I didn't know that, but I knew that, that they have to because they receive money to have this diversity of writers. So they have a festival where they have to produce like a five or ten different, um, uh, how do you say, it? like a short films or you know, or I, I I think it's short films. So I participate in HBO where they have uh, African American writers, they have Latino writers, they have Asian writers, and they have to pick, you know, and we produce one. Uh, I did produce it. I was one of the actors. It was called um, Un Unimundo 45. And that was about, you know, this, uh, uh, a producer on Telemundo. It's supposed to be Telemundo, but they call it Unimundo, so they won't have, you know, nothing to do. But, but I love it because it was a very good and a strong uh, message, you know, and that sometimes the media scares our audiences, scares our people with misinformation. And they have us, you know, in this box, you know, and we believe everything the anchor says on TV and we go with them and, oh my God, the migra is coming. And we, you know, we're trying to run like Ucarachas, but when it's all, all about the psychic that they use to control us, you know, so it was mm -hmm. a very powerful piece, but check out those uh, pages. I think you can be amazing writer and a great help for our community and a great voice, you know, so check all those uh, pages because they all have programs for new writers. Yeah, yeah, I'll have a look for sure. Sí, y pues me da mucho gusto. Y pues, Carlos, Cinnamon, it was a pleasure to have you in our programa de las madreadas. Remember, this program stays here and it's also staying in YouTube and our page, La Mejor Radio FM slash um, Diego. That's our, our channel. So make sure to go visit it and share us and put like and subscribe. Eso es La Mejor Radio FM Rayita Diego. Estamos en, en YouTube. And please, go get your tickets. Triple W teatrofridacalo.org www.teatrofridacalo.org www.fridacalotheater.org <laughs> Get your tickets. It's 13 plays for $10 and you can they send you the link and you can watch it in, in a lapse of 24 hours. So take your time. You can watch a couple of right now. You can re-watch them, which I did, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you have to, you know, support theater and it's really a small token of appreciation for all the work that it has done in this 10 pieces of amazing material. So muchísimas gracias, Carlos. Anything else that you guys want to share with us before we leave? No, just uh, love yourself and each other. There you go. <laughs> yeah, just really happy to be here. Uh, thanks yes. again, Blanca, for having us. Yes, thank oh, you so much. Un placer, un placer. So once again, I'm going to show you how we say goodbye in this show. I always say, las madreadas se despiden, las mejores vibras. And right after, we all say, un día a la vez. ¿Listos? Uh -huh. Bien. Ok. Pues muchísimas gracias a todos por estar con nosotros. Recuerden, mañana tenemos un invitado muy especial, un cantante desde Guatemala. Así es que acompáñenos. Ahora sí, las madreadas se despiden, las mejores vibras. Un día. Un, un día, día a la vez. A la vez. Yes. Yes. Muchísimas gracias. <laughs>